Praise the Lord, um, everyone that is watching us, uh, both on Facebook and YouTube. And for those that will have an opportunity to, to watch this sermon later, we want to thank God for you. Uh, we bless the Lord for you that are watching in Uganda, in Kenya, uh, in all the East African countries, in South Africa, the all of Africa and the world at large. We greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and we welcome you to this wonderful broadcast. Um, firstly, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to bless you for today. We want to thank you for your grace and mercy. The Bible says the interest of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. As we share and preach your word today, may you speak and minister to us in ways and manners deeper than we've ever thought. In the name uh, that is above every other name. Uh, we are taking our reading today from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Uh, it continues to say in 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ Jesus, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. Today I want to share with you a simple sermon entitled, um, entitled The Ministry of Reconciliation. The Ministry of Reconciliation. The, the, the wonderful ministry that God has committed to us. And let's begin from, uh, let's go back for, uh, from verses 17 where the Bible says, Therefore, if any man, hallelujah. When the Bible says, therefore, if any man, it is regardless of what that man has done. It is regardless of what has happened in the life of that man. When the scripture says, therefore, if any man, Look, there are people that could say, oh, you know, I committed A, B, C, D. I, I was this, I was this. Paul was a persecutor of the church. He speaks of himself and says, I, I, I persecuted the church of Christ and wasted it. But when the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that shined through a light that Paul made, when that light shined on that man, God accepted him. Praise the Lord. There was an acceptance that came to that man when God shined on him. When that light from heaven sh sh shined on him, God had chosen him. And that man later writes in Romans 5.17, like we've just read, that there are four, if any man, if any man be in Christ Jesus, that man is a new creation. That man is a new creature. He is not the old creature. That he, he is no longer the old man, but now he's a new man. He is a new man. The Bible says we are new. We are, we are recreated in the image of him. And he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And he says, all things are passed away. All things of that man. All things that have been known about that man. All those things are passed away. And he says, behold, there is a colon. And he says, behold, and there is a comma immediately. And he says, all things are become new. When you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Bible says you are a new creation. Old things are passed away. There are people who get born again and begin to say, oh, you see, I got born again. And they begin to teach them that even though you got born again, there are demons from your father's uh, side. There are demons from your mother's side. The person that they, whose name you carry was ABCD. That person never used to give birth. That person was a thief. Oh, you see people who are named this name in our family. It means this. And... Before you're born again, it seems almost as though the things they are saying are true. Why? Because the devil wants to establish his testimony. 
praise the Lord Jesus. But when you come, when you are awakened to this conscious, when you are awakened to this understanding, you understand, you come to the appreciation of the fact that old things are passed away. When you get born again, it doesn't mean that your skin color is going to change or that you're going to become brown because you were black before or that you're going to become black because you were brown before. But look, it is not about the physical, you remain the same person. But there is something that has happened in your spirit. The Bible says that your spirit is now regenerated, is now recreated. You are a new man, totally new. Why? Because you are born of the, of the spirit. Praise God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things, whatever you decide to, what you know as old and what you don't know as old, to God, old things are passed away. They are passed away. Don't go back to them and pick those old stuff and say, oh, you see, I still have my heritage. No, look, old things are passed away. You are no longer under the dictates of your clan you are no longer under the influence of the of the demons from your father's side or mother's side now you are in a new clan praise god hallelujah now you are in a new clan where jesus is our brother and we have god as our father praise god and he says the old all things have become new so all things that pertain to you have become new you live in the, in the newness of life. You know, I love it when people sing and say, uh, I'm walking in power. I move in miracles. I live a life of favor. Praise the Lord. Because that is who we've become. If you lived a life of rejection before, I want to confirm to you, all things are become new. If you lived a life of shame before, I want to confirm to you and tell you, all things are become new. If you lived a life of poverty, hey, I have good news for you. Now you live a life of favor. Now you live a life of wealth and richness. Praise God. So he says all things have become new. Verses 18, he says, and all things are of God. Think about it. All things are of God. Your health is of God. Your heartbeat is of God. Your body is of God. Your property are of God. Your thoughts are of God. Everything about you and that is associated with you is of God. And all things, the all things that have become new, the Bible says all those things are of God. Praise the Lord. And all things are of God. Which God? Who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and what happened he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation now when Jesus Christ is at the cross the Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself because when Adam and Eve sinned they broke the relationship that they carried with God they they, 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 they fell from a certain level of glory and that brought enmity between God and man. And when you read through scripture from Genesis to Malachi and through the Gospels where we have the coming of our Lord Jesus in the flesh, you see that there was a desire in the heart of God to reconcile his relationship with man. And in the Old Testament, he gave them figures and forms of things to use, sacrifices and all these other things as you read in Leviticus. And you realize that the relationship was not fully restored. God is a God of relationship. And if there is anything God is interested in from Genesis to Revelation is his relationship with humanity. God has always desired to have a deeper relationship with man. Hallelujah. Because we are created in his image. He knew us before we were formed in, a ma in our mother's wombs. Like, he is that God that has always wanted to have a relationship with us. And oftentimes when I ask who is God, I always say, you see, God is, is a being that wants to relate. If you ever want to define God, then you must define God by relationship. Without relationship, then we are not talking about God. We are talking about another thing. 
what separates the God of the Christian is that he's a God that wants to relate. And guess what? He relates with love. Hallelujah. He relates with and in love. He always wants to relate with man. That has been his dis deepest, deep, deepest desire. Praise God. I beg your pardon. So Jesus Christ at the cross, the Bible tells us that he was reconciling the world. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That man, of course, the cross had four corners. He was reconciling the four corners of the world back to himself. Why? Because things had went out of their way by the influence of the devil. So God comes in the New Testament through our Lord Jesus Christ to just reconcile the world back to himself. And when I talk about the world, I'm talking about you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the ministry of Christ. But guess what? After he has reconciled us back to himself by Christ Jesus, that same God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So the Bible says he has reconciled us to himself and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation that God has given and has trusted with us is to reconcile other people that are not yet reconciled to him. And those are the people that have not received, re that have not received salvation. Praise God. So he continues to say in verses 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and he hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So, so two things happen here. He has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation, number one, but also he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation, but he realizes that, oh, look, I can't give you a ministry when I've not given you a message. Every minister must have and carry a message for his generation. That's why he says in Isaiah that I, move, I moved about Zion. I looked at his bullocks. I, moved, I, I looked at everything, the streets. And when that man comes back, he comes back with a message for his generation. Every one of us that has been called and ordained by God, after we are given our ministration, we are given the message. You can't ever separate a minister from a message. Every minister must have and carry a distinctive message for his generation. Of course, we will preach a hundred sermons, but there will be that one thing that will define us. Kenneth again says that God told me, go teach my people faith. He taught marriage. He taught many things. But the one thing that defines Kenneth again is faith. When you read that man's books about faith, oh my God, you can do crazy things. Praise the Lord. Why? Because God told him, go teach my people faith. Period. Hallelujah. That was the one ingredient that God gave him. That was the one message. So when God gives us the ministry of reconciliation, he has also entrusted with us the word of reconciliation, the message that must reconcile men back to himself. Praise God. So he continues to say, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are Christ ambassadors. Praise God. And he says, As though God did beseech you by us, pray you in Christ instead, be ye reconciled to Christ. The one thing that we are telling the world is, look, be reconciled to Christ. Be reconciled to Christ. Full stop. And that is the evangelistic responsibility that God has given us. And this is the continuity of the message. That for he hath made him to be seen for us. God made Jesus Christ to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus didn't know sin. He had no relationship with sin. He was born by a virgin Mary. But that man knew no sin. He was without spot or wrinkle. He is the most perfect man that has ever lived the surface of this earth. He knew no sin. But the Bible says God made him to be sin. He made him to be sin. 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So our righteousness is of him. And we are made the righteousness of God still in Christ, not outside Christ. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you that when the Bible says that he has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation and he has given us the word of reconciliation with one responsibility telling the world that you be re reconciled to Christ Jesus. God has loved every man and cherished every man and he, Jesus came in the body and died for everyone. But we need to take another step to believe him as our Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to take another step of believing him as our Lord and Savior. And to every believer, we have a responsibility to win souls. That is the ministry of reconciliation. That is the ministry of reconciliation. We have both the ministry and the word of reconciliation. And God has called us to, to, to win souls back to the kingdom. Because... At the end of the day, it will not be about how many things you had and carried in this life. At the end of the day, it will zero down to this one thing. What was your purpose on the earth and did you live out the masterpiece of God's plan that he had designed for you? But for every believer, this is not even to the evangelist. This is to every believer that is born again, that has received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We all have an evangelistic role and function we must play in the body of Christ. Of course, there is the special grace that is given to the evangelists, men and, and, and women of God, that God has ordained to preach and you know win souls but every one of us has an evangelistic role if you are a worshiper god has called you to win souls if you are a normal church member god has called you to win souls if you are an usher god has called you to win souls we all have a responsibility to win souls irrespective of who we are irrespective of the places that we carry there are people who say oh me i'm a rich man i make money for the church oh look you're supposed to win souls Praise the Lord. All of us, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. You can't have and carry an evangelistic line on your life and you're not wise. Before we even count how many, how many things you have acquired. Oh, God promoted me at my workplace. Oh, God did this. Oh, you know this year I got married. Oh, you know this year I bought a car. Yes, all those things are good and wonderful. But what have you done for the kingdom? Is there something worth to boast about and say, I have won five souls in one month? Because that is the most important thing. And in all my sermons from when I started, I never close a sermon without asking someone to come to Jesus, to receive Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. Because at the end of the day, that gives me more satisfaction than anything I will ever do on the earth. That I depopulated hell and populated heaven in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So there is a general calling, uh, there is a general call for every one of us to receive Jesus, uh, to rather to call people to the kingdom. He has trusted us with that call. Uh, let's look at Acts chapter 8 uh, when something happens. The Bible says, moreover, brethren, um, sorry. Acts chapter 8. And so was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great, great lamentations over him. As for so, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore they were scattered abroad, went everywhere preaching the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They went everywhere preaching the word. Preaching the word. And he continues to say, Then Philip, um, No, it's, sorry. Acts chapter 1, I think, verses 8. Hey, sorry. It says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my 
you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Praise God. So he says, you shall be my witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. He wasn't speaking to only the evangelists. He was speaking to everyone that has received power. If you have received the Holy Spirit in your life, you ought to be a witness. Praise God. You ought to be a witness. Everyone that is born of the Spirit, if you are born again, you are meant to be a witness. How do you live a year and finish it when you've not told someone about Christ? I remember our university days when we would sit in taxis and just preach the gospel throughout. Because th by then it didn't matter. Up to now we preach the gospel and tell men, you know what, you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That suffices. That's what makes the difference. Not the wealth, not the cars, not the marriage, not the things that we have gotten. Hallelujah. It, it has to go back to the gospel. Praise the Lord. And if we need to see revival like we have prophesied quite a number of times, then any revival must come with a winning of souls. People must be added to one kingdom and being removed from another kingdom. We must depopulate one kingdom and populate another. We must populate the kingdom of God and depopulate the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of Satan. Praise the Lord Jesus. So it tells them that, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is a come upon you. And what does he say? And you shall be witnesses unto me. Who are the witnesses unto God? The ones that are preaching the gospel. The ones that are saying, oh, this Jesus is alive. The ones that are telling men, be reconciled to Christ. And he says, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, from where you are. When we are preaching, we ought to start from where we are. Where we are born from. Hallelujah. Where we are born from. There are people who say, oh, me, I'm going to London. Me, I'm going to America. If God has called you for that place, it is okay. But if God has not called you for, that, for those places, it is good that the testimony begins from home here. Hallelujah. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the most uttermost parts of the world. Praise God. When you have received power, what is your responsibility? To be witnesses unto him to preach the gospel, to bear witness of this light and say, Jesus is still true. To say, Jesus is still real. He reigns. He's seated on the cross. He paid for your sins. He is that loving and cherishing God that is ready and uh, that has opened his arms to receive you just the way you are. That's why he says, all of you that are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. There are people that are watching me and you are heavy laden. Things have come upon you and you, 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 you feel you can't carry them any longer. Jesus speaks through my voice and is telling you, come unto me and I will give you rest. There are people who have had enemies, people that have fought them, people that have stolen what didn't belong to them people that have cheated them i was watching recently on the news i think they were doing a documentary about uh bitcoin and how many people have lost money in that syndicate in that you know thing it's simply again because people want money they have not worked for but of course i can't be insensitive to the fact that there are people who are hurting because they have lost millions and millions of money praise the lord and even to you who has lost lots of money, Jesus' voice is speaking to you and telling you, be ye reconciled unto me. I still love you. I still treasure you. I want you as my own. I died for you. I paid a price for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, when he says you shall be my witnesses in in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world, we are called to be witnesses. Hallelujah. We are called to be witnesses. This gospel was delivered down by men that were witnesses of this gospel. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. They were witnesses. 
John at some point he says uh, 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 regarding the, the one we have touched, the one we have handled, regarding the word of life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel was delivered to us by men that were witnesses. And we are witnesses to the true working of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are simply telling men, we are witnesses and we shall witness to you what God has done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the Azusa Street revival, when, the, when, when, when the, that one of the biggest revivals that have hit this world, praise the Lord. When, when that revival came, when men were baptized with tongues, when men began to speak in other tongues and see miracles, the one thing that was evident was that wherever that revival went, men were won over to God. Men were won over to God. We should count souls, not how much money we have gotten. We should count that, oh, this year I have witnessed to a hundred people. Praise the Lord. This number of people has been one to God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 3 verses 15. The scriptures speak of something uh, very important. First Peter 3.15. The Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you. A reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. God has called us to, to have a reason, to give a reason for the hope that is in us with meekness and fear. There are people who, who I see at times, I'm, I'm sorry, on, probably on the streets or some other places, and they are preaching Christ but in strife. No, he has called us to. So it's incumbent on every born again Christian to give a reason for the hope that is in you without quarreling without losing temper praise god there are people who preach jesus but they have already lost their temper praise god the bible has told us in meekness and fear in meekness and fear there are people whom in the name of preaching the gospel we've actually repelled from jesus christ because of the way we presented the gospel to them. We never presented it with meekness and fear. And oftentimes when you sense that it is a debate, run away from it. Distance yourself from it. But if someone has asked, even when they have asked with a wrong motive, answer in meekness and fear. Answer in meekness, in humility, in humbleness, and in respect, with a particular level of reverence in the name that is above every other name that is the name of Jesus Christ when <clears throat> when 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 you look at at the life of Paul one of the most distinctive things that you will observe in the life of that man is the fact that at any time Paul was ready to give a reason for the faith that was in him and when God calls him, the first thing he does, he preaches, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That was the message on the lips of that man. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The moment that God calls him. And when we go to Acts chapter 17, verses 17, the Bible says, Therefore distributed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devoid persons and in the market daily with them that met him. Are we together? He was always ready to tell men look jesus is true jesus is alive there is there is a reason for the hope that is in me and i just don't want it to end with me i want it to give it to another person because even you there are people who got born again because another person preached to them there are people who have been lucky that jesus appeared to them and they received him as their lord and savior but if you know that the gospel whichever way it came or another person spoke to you or jesus appeared to you for whichever medium that you received jesus as your lord and savior it is incumbent on you to give that same life to another person how do you it beats my understanding how you can even settle for a year without having preached to another person and you are okay like you are okay Praise the Lord. There is, there is a reason in our spirits 
why we can't keep quiet on what Jesus has done and what Jesus can do. He is still interested in the salvation of men and that's why we preach this gospel every other day. I, there is no time I've closed service without asking someone to come to Jesus. Why? Because that is the most important thing. That is the most important. The Bible says that heaven rejoices when one soul is one to God. So, can you decide to make some parties in heaven by winning souls? Because every person that is one to the Lord, you're making parties in heaven. Hallelujah. There are times I fuel, I, 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 I facilitate, get all my salary, put it into the gospel when we are going to a mission somewhere to just preach the gospel. And I come back so happy and full of the glory and the, and the joy of the Lord. Why? Because we look at those lists and begin to pray. We thank you for John. Lord, he received you as his personal Lord and Savior. May you establish him. May you build him. We are, we are happy. We are excited because one person has been one. Because you never know who you preach to. You never know and you will never know. The day Billy Graham got born again, he was the only young boy who received Jesus on that crusade ground. He was the only one. And look at how many people Billy Graham brought to the Lord in his life of ministry. Praise the Lord Jesus. Look at how many people Billy Graham brought to the Lord in his life of ministry. So Paul also gave himself time to, to preach to men, to the Jews. The Bible says, Daily. Daily means every day. Every opportunity he had, he would share Jesus with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms chapter, th uh, chapter 11 verses 3, If the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? These are the foundations of Christianity. Salvation of humanity. These are foundations of Christianity. And foundations of Christianity is the salvation for men. If any church ever loses its touch with reaching out, that church is most irrelevant. If any Christian ever loses his touch with reaching out to the lost, that Christian is the most irrelevant. What gives us relevance? is in reaching out. The church of Christ has been has been and should be known for reaching out. We should not boast by building kingdoms around us by men who honor us and kiss our shoes and do all these funny things. Praise the Lord. Our heartbeat every other day should be in how many people have been won over to the kingdom. At times I look at people who work with these Alliance, CENGEL, DWAT, these networking companies, how they are ready to convince you, praise the Lord, to join them by telling you, oh, you will sell this product and earn this amount of money. And if they can do that, how much more us? Praise the Lord. We have a hope in us and we need to deliver that hope to the world. If the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? These are the foundations and we ought to rebuild the foundations of Christianity. Salvation is key. And in the couple of sermons to come, I am going to focus on this thing. Praise the Lord. To just help you understand the foundation that we have. Praise the Lord. We have been called to reach out. We've been called to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 19. Let's read a couple of scriptures here. Verses 19, the Bible says, For, other, for the earnest expectation of creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Praise the Lord. Let's jump to verses 22. The Bible continues to say, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Creation is groaning for the manifestation of the true sons of God. 
creation wants to hear a certain message. Praise the Lord. Creation wants to hear a certain message. And when that message is delivered, everything would come to order. The environment, the floods want to hear a certain message from a certain mouth. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Creation wants to hear a certain message. In the Welsh revival, they tell us men preached the gospel and even animals became obedient to their masters. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Even animals became obedient. A man would just command it, do this, and it does it. Think about that glory. Hallelujah. So creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mark 16, 15, the Bible says, Go preach this gospel to every creature. Every creature in that means that uh, it is catitis, which means man, uh, structures. It also means laws. So God has not only called us to preach to people. God has actually called us to preach to every Thing, as of everything. God has, preached, has called us to preach to the law of graffiti. God has called us to preach to laws. You're working in a company that has funny policies. God has called you to preach to those policies. Men, we have been called to preach to our shoes. We have been called to preach to our air. You're called to preach to your clothes. If Let me tell you something. The days when I used to have one shoe, I would tell it, your days are soon coming to an end. I am soon putting on a new shoe in the name of Jesus. You are soon wearing out in the name of Jesus. You have to preach. The Bible says, can fire burn in the bosom of a man of God and his clothes don't burn. Meaning, whatever is attached to you must also represent and preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have a funny phone in your hands, tell it, darling, I'm soon giving you away. I won't even sell you. I'm soon giving you away for a better phone. Like, preach to everything in your life. It must hear you. How can you have a knife in your hands and you're looking for it? How can even things start to disappear from you? You have something on your head and you're looking for it. That's not the life of a born-again Christian. The life of a born-again Christian is that everything around you must know that you are Lord. When Jesus Christ was sending a man to go and pick the house, he said, go and tell him that the master has said. Think about it. Jesus knew where the donkey was and he tells the man, go and pick it. The master has said. He goes to the tree and he wants something to eat and it has nothing. And he says, no man will eat from you. The Bible says he answered it and said, he answered it and said, meaning when he spoke to it, that tree answered him and said, it's not my season. But Jesus, the Bible says he answered it and said, no man will eat from you because the son of God, whatever he turns to must respond to him. Why? Because he has preached to them. Creation must obey you. Cars that are in the bones, our, our cars, they don't belong to anyone else. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Things must not look at you and you look strange. Hallelujah. The latest iPhone must look at you and know that you, you are a bit familiar. I have met people in my life who have met me for the very first time. And they tell me, oh, your face looks familiar. No, you've not seen me anywhere. We've not met. But there is a way I have commended myself in the spirit. There is a certain prayer I pray. Praise the Lord. That when you meet me and you're supposed to reject me, you must accept me. Why? Because this law puts you under. Hallelujah. I have preached to everything around me. Men, you have to preach to everything around you. After preaching to people, get into that small room with your percolator and say, I want to thank you, Lord, for the biggest mansion in the world. Praise the Lord Jesus. Get into that casino room and say, Father, I thank you. I'm blessed. Kings shall come to my rising. I am favored and graced. Speak greatness. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and if you don't doubt it in your heart, it shall be done for you. If you don't doubt in your heart. After preaching to everything around you, 
walk like the most blessed man in the name of Jesus? Because look, there are things in this world that are out of course and we are supposed to bring them back to course. Many things are out of course and our role is to bring them back on course. To simply tell them, look, Jesus is true and is real. And that same God has given us an authority and power that is beyond any power in the name that is above every other name. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When we go back um, where the Bible says that he has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, I think verses 17 below. The word reconciliation is a Greek word which is called Catalage, catalage, catalage means to exchange, to restore, to divine favor. It also borrows another word called catalaso, which means to change mutually or to compound a difference. When the Bible says that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, he has given us a ministry that restores divine favor to men. Hallelujah. He has given us a ministry that changes men, that mutually changes men, that 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 causes a difference in the lives of men. That's why at times we dare people and tell them, go listen to, to this thing that I taught about. And when they fully capture their understanding, their lives are totally transformed. Why? Because it's not in the many words that I spoke. It's in the heart of Christ that is revealed in that someone. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ye reconciled to, the, to, to, to Christ Jesus. Be ye reconciled to God. He has given you the ministry of reconciliation and he has given you the word of reconciliation. Praise God. If you're there and you need to receive this Jesus who has reconciled you to himself, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're there and you've just said that prayer, wow, I want to assure you you're born again. Get to the numbers. Uh, get to the numbers on our walls and someone will be available to help you walk this life of Christianity and walk this journey that you have entered in the name of Jesus. If you're there and you have any pain in your body, right now touch where it hurts in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, otherwise, we love you and... Bye.